Prospects have dimmed for what would have been the biggest deal ever, the $50 billion merger of AT&T and SBC Communications. CBC's Felicia Taylor has more on the unraveling of the talks. Morning, Felicia. Good morning. Okay, so what's the main stumbling block here? Well, obviously there are many hurdles, but the main opposition comes from Washington, mostly unconcerned that it's anti-competitive. This combina combination may not be good for the consumer and looks a lot like the old days of Ma Bell, when the customer had no choice in its provider. This merger could edge out other local and long-distance services, and that obviously reduces natural pricing competition. Also, SBC is going to have to open its local markets to gain faster entry into long-distance service in seven states. That's not an easy task. Even if they do decide it's worth it, it'll be costly costly, time-consuming, about two years of regulatory struggle, and it could still get rejected. Hmm, so would this deal really have made sense? Well, keep in mind, you know, it was funny, the two companies have never even publicly revealed that they're in merger talks, despite some public speculation that we heard from AT&T chairman Robert Allen. The deal might make sense for AT&T, considering it's had recent rough times. The mere fact it's even looking for a partner suggests it's concerned about going the future alone. Sources have even told CNBC the real issue concerns John Walter. He's the man expected to succeed Robert Allen. AT&T may be disappointed with that choice, and as the Wall Street Journal reports, has seemingly undermined him in recent days. They may be trying to put in place yet another new management structure before Allen steps down. Well, so what do you think? Could this set off a, a wave of similar talks? It just may. MCI is already on the prowl. Its chairman said it's going to start taking names of companies that would likely join them as a, quote, necessary evil. Gotcha. Okay, thanks, Felicia. All right. All right. Now, time to check on the weekend weather. How's it look? Looking pretty good over most of the country. We're getting set up on this Friday with generally clear conditions over much of the country. A little impulse moving in the Pacific Northwest will bring some rain and cloudy skies. And another one over the Rockies will move over to the Northern Plain states and lingering clouds over the southeast. So Saturday's weather map looks like this. Showery and thunderstorms over parts of the southeast. Thunderstorms from Wyoming up through Minnesota. And a little damp in western Washington. Bright sunshine for the southwest. And a beautiful Saturday along the northeast from Maine down through the Carolinas back to the Great Lakes. Checking on Sunday's weather map. Still a little thundery over parts of the southeast. Extending up through the western Ohio Valley. Wet in the Pacific Northwest. Even some high mountain snows, say on the top of Mount Rainier. And sunshine all the way from California through Colorado and down through the Texas area. For more weather details, try the weather site on MSNBC. That's on the web at IntelliCast.com. And happy surfing on the web or in the water this weekend. Linda. All right. Thanks, Joe. It is Friday, June 27th. I'm Linda Vester. This is NBC News at Sunrise. Sunrise. America's favorite early morning program, NBC News, now more than ever.